So, welcome to our ILAC 2022 program on the Chinese legal profession, new developments in legal services and ethical challenges in the digital era. Uh, just uh, confirm for our panelists on Zoom that we are recording this and we have your permission to record and that anyone who joins on Zoom to just know it's being recorded. Now, it's this is a really big topic. And um, oh, first, my name is Judy McMorrow. I am a professor at Boston College Law School and honored to be um, uh, chairing this panel. Um, now, as I think probably most people know, the Chinese legal profession has grown dramatically over the last 40 years. There are now over 500,000 lawyers in China. It's a 15 billion, legal services is a $15 billion industry. It's growing rapidly. We, we know that um, from experience with other developed cultures as the economy grows, the need for legal services grows to, and in addition to legal services that support the whole range of the needs of people in daily life. And of course our criminal process system, administrative state. So we do have, um, uh, I think we have this tremendous, uh, rapidly growing legal profession that's surprisingly young. So we are really um, lucky today to have three frontline participants in the growth and development of the Chinese legal profession and in legal ethics. We have Professor Ding Xianchun, who is Professor at Renmin University School of Law. Um, he, he works extensively on comparative law and served as deputy chair of the China Comparative Law Association and works in particular on, on comparative uh, legal education in the, uh, China, Japan, and US and has been active in helping promote the building and growth of the Chinese legal profession. And we have Professor Xu Shenzhen, who is Dean of the China University um, uh, School of, of, of China University of Political Science and Law and, and, and Dean of their Juris Master's program. And uh, Xu Shenjian was a director of the first, and I think this is super impressive, legal ethics major in China. And that uh, the effort for years and years toiling on the to create a development and infrastructure to think and talk about legal ethics. It's in part, he's very, very active in the development of, of legal, the professional legal services um, in China and the growth of experiential learning. So it's not surprising that the China internet court asked him to be an, an advisor on their court. So he comes to us today that um, with that really you, a wonderful experience. And oh, and it just, can I do, um, uh, Shenjian, a shout out that when his university went online, uh, or when it required the students to stay on campus rather, this spring, um, he moved into his office and stayed in his office for two months in harmony with the students said, good for you. Uh, then, and we also have Professor Yin Bo, who's an associate professor at Beijing Normal University. He's a very active scholar and practicing lawyer in a wide variety of areas, but in particular, he has a strong expertise in criminal law and frontline firsthand experience in engaging in criminal trials conducted online. So we have here three wonderful perspectives to help us understand. We'll begin with Professor Ding, who will provide the overview the, as that view of the um, development of um, the, uh, so I think Ding, Ding, we'll start with Ding and give us an overview of um, what's happening in uh, online dispute resolution, uh, particularly with the courts in the judiciary. And then second, we'll have uh, Xu, uh, Xu Shenjian uh, I'm giving his experience on the Beijing internet court and Yin Bo then talking about, his ex about uh, criminal defense work in China. And for each, our goal is to have a sort of overview of the um, what's happening and then an opportunity to think and reflect on um, the, how this, the challenges it poses to the legal profession and legal ethics. So uh, Ding, shall we begin with you? I think you may need to share your screen. Um, yes, can you hear me now? I can hear, yes, I can hear you fine. Okay, can you see the, my slide? Uh, not, uh, it started sharing, but it hasn't come through yet. 
Let me try it again. Yeah. So I got to tell you, my, the room is here and the camera's I'm going to look to the room, so it'll be in there. Um, okay. uh, can you see yeah, my slide? Um, now, uh, we still can't see your slide. Uh, you cannot see? No, but let me. <laughs> Not yet. Here we go. I shared. It's yeah, I'm uh, not seeing it, but. Can you see uh, Professor Yimbro or Sun Jian? Uh, yeah, I couldn't uh, see you. You uh, couldn't. Uh, yeah. Let me stop and retry. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, now yes. I can. Now yeah. we can see it. Yeah. And, now, and go to go to slide one. It popped up at slides. We can now see slide three. So go up to can you see Judy? Yeah, we can see it, but it's showing up now at slide three. So if you go back to slide okay. one. Yeah, slide two. Yeah. Slide two. So we're at okay, slide... start from slide one. It's at, start at can one. See? Can you see that? And it's still dark. So whatever magic you did, you wow. clicked on it, then you might have to click share screen again once you have okay. it on the page you want. I'll try that again. I have my handy USB backup, but I don't know how to get to the USB oh, on the Zoom. Okay, so can yeah. you see now? Okay, you... it is still dark. I have to say, Ding, uh, it has started screen sharing, so maybe it's simply the system is slow. Can you see now? It's better. I, I, my, well, we can see, what we see is, um, ah, now we can, yes. Okay. 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 So, okay, so first of all, thank you, Judy. Thank you for, for organizing this panel uh, at this conference, I I think I I was a uh, uh, attended conference uh, in New York a couple of years ago. It's my uh, great honor to be back uh, again, uh, participating in this uh, conference, attending this conference uh, remotely. Uh, it's a very unique uh, experience. Um, I also want to thank my colleagues, Professor Jin and uh, Yin Bo, to join with us together. So uh, today, uh, the topic I present is uh, quite uh, innovative. Also, it's quite new for me. I my job is to give a brief uh, introduction of online uh, legal service. Uh, in China, also I read the, some um, challenges and uh, concerns uh, because of the adoption of uh, new technologies in Chinese uh, judiciary. So basically, I will uh, talk three topics uh, within about uh, fifty minutes. Uh, so first of all. Uh, I, I think uh, you should be noticed that uh, uh, the dramatic development of uh, technology in Chinese judiciary uh, took place in the past uh, uh, 10 years uh, after the, uh, the Chief Justice Zhou Qiang took his office in, to, in 2012. In 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past 10 years, uh, a lot of uh, achievements uh, uh, achieved, a lot of uh, development achieved uh, institutionally, procedurally, and logically uh, in, in terms of adopting uh, new technologies in judiciary in China. Uh, basically, I will highlight three aspects, the use of electronic evidence and the blockchain and the, the construction of uh, building of smart uh, power project uh, and the insertion of uh, internet costs in, uh, in big cities. Uh, okay, I think the main targets, main goals for adopting, uh, for adopting technology for uh, the, the Chief Justice it's very easy. It's very consistent with the uh, the goals of uh, judicial reform, uh, like uh, to enhance uh, transparency, effectiveness, and uh, access to justice, etc. So, the generally speaking, 
uh, to adopt uh, technology in uh, judicial works uh, actually is consistent with this, uh, these goals. Uh, also, I, I think uh, in the past years, uh, in, uh, China uh, has achieved aggressive uh, progress, uh, which is uh, unprecedented, and also in, uh, unprecedented, unprecedented in China, also it's very rare in the world. Um, in terms of the details, uh, achievements, First of all, I think we should uh, introduce uh, the use of electronic evidence and uh, blockchain. Um, so before uh, 2012, the electronic data was not recognized as evidence because according to the civil procedure law, uh, only seven types of uh, uh, evidence uh, have been recognized, but uh, with the amendment of uh, civil procedure law in 2012, a new type of evidence was added, electronic data. Uh, electronic data uh, was introduced as a formal format, formal type, of evidence, which um, laid down uh, the legal foundation for judge to actually uh, recognize the uh, electronic uh, evidence uh, uh, from the, the from the perspective of law, perspective of law. So uh, now uh, after the twenty twelve. Uh, Chinese judge uh, actively to recognize the uh, uh, electronic data evidence. Uh, uh, there are some uh, statistics that more than 73% of Chinese civil cases involved uh, in evidence. So that's a legal perspective. Uh, also from technical perspective. Uh, so Chinese Supreme Court uh, uh, adopted a new technology, a blockchain, uh, recently to reserve, reserve uh, evidence, to reserve evidence so that because of the adoption of blockchain technology, uh, some inter inherent drawbacks of the evidence just like uh, uh, manip many manipulations, uh, temporary had been partially uh, resolved so that uh, Chinese judge can uh, can uh, 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 can uh, use those kind of uh, evidence uh, without uh, doubt, without doubt. Uh, also, in recent years, uh, the Supreme Court and uh, some uh, local courts, especially uh, local uh, internet courts, they have uh, developed uh, blockchain platforms, uh, collaborated, uh, collaborating, collaborated with uh, some giant IT companies. So the adoption of a black, uh, blockchain technology uh, dramatically uh, improved the authentic authenticity of uh, e evidence. Uh, so um, also uh, the benefit for the blockchain to reserve uh, e evidence is very cheaper comparing to the public uh, uh, notarization, which is the traditional way to to reserve e evidence. Um, in, in June 2018, uh, uh, Chinese judge wrote out uh, an active, uh, concluding, active um, analysis uh, that uh, 
that uh, attitude was adopted, accepted by the Supreme Court. Uh, following in the case, uh, the Supreme Court uh, issued a uh, uh, judicial interpretation uh, recognizing the, the evidence uh, deposited, so which also uh, without the legal basis uh, from evidence uh, rules. Uh, so that's the first so, uh, point, first uh, part. Uh, the second one is uh, uh, the Supreme Court uh, launched a national-wide uh, project to strengthen uh, inte intelligent uh, court, intelligent court in, in China, in China. Uh, also we can see to build a smart court in China project uh, with the approach of um, top down. Uh, a lot of uh, works have been completed like uh, digital, uh, digitization of court files construction of multi-online platforms, uh, legal AI software and uh, programs invented and uh, utilized uh, also uh, institution for e service of for judicial document, et cetera. Et cetera. Uh, so a lot of uh, technologies had been uh, adopted to assist uh, uh, Chinese jobs in adjudication uh, and uh, to improve uh, the effectiveness and uh, the uh, and also efficiency of uh, judicial results. Among them, uh, two uh, key developments are uh, uh, outstanding. Outstanding. Uh, they are including uh, automatic speech recognition technology uh, for trial transcripts and also an automatic uh, notification system for similar cases. They are very outstanding and uh, uh, progressive. Uh, uh, so uh, like a uh, transcript uh, uh, system invented by iFly Tech Company, uh, invented by iFly Tech Company, uh, which uh, dramatically improved the uh, effectiveness and the uh, efficiency of uh, trans uh, transcription on the on, on the court. The court. This system, this system has been uh, installed uh, in the majority of uh, Chinese courtrooms. And also uh, automatic uh, notification system uh, contributed to uh, to the judicial uh, works uh, that uh, help uh, Chinese judges identify similar cases so that uh, they can uh, follow the the the, the doctrine of uh, stare diseases, uh, something like that. Uh, so that's the. Uh, also, another very important uh, progress achieved uh, is the establishment of an internet cause. Internet cause. Uh, since uh, 2017, uh, four uh, internet cause have been established in Hangzhou, Beijing, Guangzhou, and uh, Chengdu, and Chengdu. So those. Uh, cyber, those internet calls uh, uh, basically uh, the, the proceeding uh, uh, within the calls, every uh, adjudication works conducted uh, online, and also uh, those calls uh, deal handle handle the cases. Online, online cases, uh, on, uh, also uh, focus on uh, civil disputes uh, at first instance. So online cases, online civil cases at first instance, also are, uh, are being adjudicated online. So including case filing, hearing, uh, reviewing evidence, etc. Everything happened online. 
in a virtual, in a virtual environment. So also uh, with the acceptance of the four uh, uh, internet calls, uh, uh, student people's calls uh, publish uh, some uh, interpretation to regulate um, uh, the works. Also, uh, you should be noticed that uh, uh, because of those kind of uh, uh, progresses achieved in the past uh, years, uh, even within the even the uh, the COVID nineteen pandemic, uh, Chinese court still can uh, can maintain its uh, its daily works. Uh, after the outbreak of uh, COVID nineteen. Uh, the Supreme Court extended the uh, uh, traditional uh, virtual trial from um, uh, civil uh, cases, uh, civil and initial cases to criminal cases. I think that my colleague will uh, introduce uh, the practice of uh, the virtual trial of uh, criminal cases uh, later. And so that's the uh, progresses achieved. Uh, in terms of adopting uh, technologies in the Chinese uh, judiciary. Uh, things happened so fast and dramatically and dramatic. So, uh, but it brought a lot of uh, benefits. Uh, meanwhile, uh, some um, uh, concerns, some challenges also, uh, also are also faced or being faced, being faced. Uh, for example, uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, international bio trial standards have been challenged uh, given the, the fast uh, development of uh, technology in Chinese judiciary. So for example, the impartiality of a judicial judiciary, because a lot of, for example, a lot of internet courts, they have to rely on the technologies provided by giant IT companies, then given such kind of circumstances, how to secure, how to guarantee the impartiality of a judiciary, especially if, uh, if uh, a giant IT company became one part of uh, litigation. So also others, uh, other uh, standards also are facing uh, challenging uh, given the uh, development of uh, uh, technology in Chinese judiciary, like the right to fair hearing, equality of uh, parties, others. And also a uh, lot of concerns and ethical, ethical risks uh, uh, are being faced for Chinese legal professionals. Uh, for example, um, the, 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 the concerns about the abusing of uh, powers of jobs uh, because we don't think a uh, uh, virtual way is uh, ideal, but obviously jobs have big discretionary power in deciding to take what kind of format. Uh, so it could be easily uh, abused for jobs. Also uh, because of a lack or less, less or lack Lack or less monitoring on the behaviors and performance of advocates uh, in a virtual environment, and how to, um, it's very hard to, it's, it's easy to, to cause some um, uh, uh, ethical uh, problems, ethical problems. For example, uh, the participation of unauthorized persons uh, in virtual court trial could be, uh, you know, uh, happen. And also some uh, concern of protection of personal data and uh, the privacy for because a lot of information of uh, parties uh, have been absorbed by the by the courts. Also some concerns and ethical risk for uh, for lawyers um, uh, like uh, the confidentiality issue, like the competence representation lines, etc. Uh, there are a lot of potential. And the concerns, a potential risk, and the concerns about uh, the performance uh, for lawyers, for lawyers. And uh, finally, uh, because time limited, I I would like to conclude. Uh, so, 
I, I think the one of the big feature for the uh, for development of the technology in China judiciary, everything happened very fast. Everything happened in uh, without a big legal uh, changes, which means a lot of things uh, 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 moved on without a legal basis. That's, that's, I think it's one of the uh, most dangerous things. And also, uh, I understand some uh, some countries or states, like United, some states in United States, bar associations started to regulate uh, uh, professional uh, behaviors uh, uh, in a, a virtual uh, environment. I think we can learn something from uh, foreign countries, from our counterparts, and I think that's uh, that's the meaning we organize this panel and uh, to attend this uh, conference. Uh, Judy always asked me uh, before, <laughs> what is the biggest room in the world? I think the answer is the room for improvement. This area also has, is a big, is, it has a big room for improvement. That's all, thank you very much. Great, great, thank you so much. Um, why don't we, uh, we take a few minutes of questions and I will, I will do a chair prerogative. And um, so I think what you were just, first of all, one great thing is the, um, the effort to create a national initiative to create an infrastructure for online um, dispute resolution so you can get ahead of the game, which is, um, but uh, one of the, and when at, there was that initiative and then the building up of the infrastructure behind the scenes, like online filings and, but through this process, and particularly over the last three years, has there been any public pushback by lawyers about um, the uh, the changes and the move to the online courts? You noted several really interesting and provocative um, ri risks, things to watch for, ethical concerns. Has Have lawyers spoken publicly about perhaps some challenges they've experienced? From the lawyer's point of view, mm, from uh, the lawyer's point of view, mm, I mean that's kind of hard to discover. If, if, but if, to your knowledge, yeah, to my knowledge, uh, 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 frankly speaking, I I didn't uh, uh, I have nothing. Uh, about I didn't hear anything about uh, this aspect, but privately, publicly, but privately, I I I had I have some discussions with uh, lawyers uh, on this issue. Uh, how to answer? Uh, yeah, it's. Mm, Uh, yeah, that's 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 something I I got I can I can respond to you immediately. So yeah. that's me. Yeah, there's there's no need to you. respond. Is often lawyers like here will uh, might be saying I I this was a good thing, this was a bad thing of a single interaction, but um, that okay. there may oh, just not I be mean, enough. There may not be enough experience yet to see how lawyers are reacting in some of these circumstances. Although we'll, um, Yinbo will be telling, talking about the criminal. Yeah, yeah Yinbo will talk with, uh, with the details, uh, but I, I can also let you know, uh, the recent conversation with my, uh, my student who, who, who is a, a criminal lawyer also. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, 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 he told me the, the benefit for the for some kind of um, uh, evolution like uh, the uh, dramatically uh, save a lot of uh, time for lawyer uh, because for example because of virtue virtue uh, trial they don't need to to go to the 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 the, the courtroom uh, so that definitely save a lot of uh, human resources that save time but on the other hand on the other hand so uh, some parties some uh, clients they prefer to have a physical courtroom, physical trial rather than virtual trial. 
uh, in this uh, circumstance, in this case, uh, their intention, how much their intention could be respected, uh, their intention could be accepted, that's crucial. In a lot of occasions, a judge will insist on their decisions in, for example, either to do the virtual, they, a lot of judges also prefer to do the uh, a virtual trial. So in this case, of course, basically as a big principle, uh, to have a virtual trial must get a consent from uh, parties. But, you know, sometimes uh, parties are not so sure which uh, format is the more appropriate, which format is the more uh, better uh, for their interest. Mm -hmm. So, you know, lawyers will face some uh, dilemma that they have to uh, deliver some um, uh, proper information to, 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 to their clients. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, they have to communicate with the uh, judge so that the judge can uh, fully uh, respect uh, the intention from the, from the parties. So in, in sometimes it's also uh, uh, also added the you know uh, added uh, uh, works for for lawyers uh, yeah. in, in in terms of to communicate um, uh, among uh, between their clients and uh, and the uh, trial jobs. So that's I think that's something I I uh, some feedback. I got from uh, mm -hmm. uh, from practice lawyers. Uh, of course, um, there are other uh, other things uh, other uh, from uh, lawyers. I think that my colleagues can uh, will 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 give the more details from other perspectives. Thank you. Um, do uh, yes, yeah. please. Um, Could you uh, say your name? Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, Dean, uh, Dean Joshua. Uh, my name is Isaac Resnick. Um, uh, you, you mentioned that there are concerns about um, unauthorized people being in the online proceedings. And I'm reminded of uh, a very public incident here in the United States when they were doing uh, virtual trials. Um, I think it was a, a hearing, a civil hearing um, involving um, two people, one of whom was a domestic abuse victim of the other one. and. The uh, maybe maybe you heard of this case, but the uh, eventually the the lawyers and the judge were able to figure out that the that the abuser was hiding in the room with the with the abuse victim while she was giving testimony, um, even though he had been ordered to stay away. Are there considerations for witness and and uh, party safety? Um, that are going into the, either either the decision to go to an online trial or um, or or rules around uh, procedures for how to manage those online trials. Okay, you mean uh, for considering to to keep the safety of victims? Yeah, uh, for example. So the what you caught can benefit for protecting uh, the safety of victim. Well, such kind of a consideration. Yes, a consideration. Yeah, I I'm not so sure exactly why the Chinese judge have such kind of consideration to take the virtual format. Uh, virtual format. Uh, it's possible. It's possible because. Basically, uh, what you format, what you uh, trial, it's um, it's a uh, it's available, it's available uh, for consideration for in 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 current now in current uh, situation in China, uh, there are two uh, two I think the two uh, elements have driven the usage of uh, virtual trial. One is the development of technology, which makes things available. Another thing, I think it's uh, because of the pandemic, pandemic prevent the COVID-19 pandemic. So the court, uh, you know, uh, activity uh, to use uh, the virtual trial. But for another consideration, like uh, you mentioned, the, 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 the example you mentioned, 
it's also possible to take the virtual trial so that um, uh, you know the victim could be protected uh, in a virtual way. But I didn't uh, get the, the concrete example uh, in, so far, but I think it's possible. I, I may come back to double check. Okay. Also, maybe. Thank you. Yeah. Um, anybody else have a question? Oh, yes. Richard. Hi. Hi, Sajid. How are you? <laughs> and uh, I want to raise a question on the automatic notification system. Because it seems to me that uh, the courts are now trying to pay attention to a similar case development in the past of the country. Is it something part of the drive of the Supreme Court to build a system, sort of like a case law system to come to our country? That that's yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question. So uh, you you know that China is a country with a civil law tradition, which means uh, a case law is not a primary source of law, not binding. But uh, think about if um, the if the different judges apply the same provision with different results, that also uh, cause the chaos of uh, tradition in, in in court. So therefore, uh, in order to uh, in, in order to uh, standardize the application of uh, of uh, of uh, uh, application of laws, the Supreme Court uh, actively to promote uh, the uh, to promote the uh, the 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 similar the kind of uh, uh, kind of a stare disease is principle. But you you know the Supreme Court had recently have uh, uh, launched the project of case guidance. Case guidance. The Supreme Court published uh, uh, typical cases. Uh, so the the on some specific issue, complex and specific issues. So uh, so the every uh, judge in every court can take a reference so that they can. And stand uh, on some on the uh, on application of a specific uh, provision. That's one thing. Also, with the uh, the, the the technology, uh, so the system the system provide uh, instrument uh, to identify some uh, similar issues, similar factors, similar facts of the case, or similar uh, result of the case to the judge so that the judge can easily identify the, the, the cases, uh, the similar cases uh, ruled out before so that they can avoid the unnecessary uh, misapplication of a specific law. So it's not a case law system, but a kind of um, you know, technical assistance system to standardize the application, application of uh, of laws in China. I think that that's the, that's the point. Thank you. Now, because of time, I think uh, Xu Shenzhen. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's my time, thank you. Hi. Right. Thank you, Julie. Yeah, yeah so Ding, I, I think. Stop. I stopped. Yeah, we, yeah, you stop, share. Great. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you, Julie. Um, and uh, good morning to uh, dear participants. It is my honor to be here to share with you the development of the uh, Beijing Internet Court and in, uh, its impact on the legal profession with the com uh, continuous development of the information technology. China is gradually moving into the era of the internet uh, data and uh, intelligence. So and, uh, for the last year, uh, once I was a one-year in-house uh, expert who work in the uh, in this uh, internet court, and uh, uh, as the internet technology develop uh, developed rapidly and become widely uh, applicable, uh, the number of the internet related cases is continuous increasing within Beijing's jurisdiction. Really, on a series of uh, uh, accomplishment brought by high quality growth of the internet. Beijing has further exploded a new uh, development, a path combining with the internet and the rule of law. In particular, the 
emergence of the internet court has enabled the legal dispute encounter by people in their daily lives to be solved in a more efficient and fair manner. The more convenient way to launch digital litigation that serves the cause of the litigation and is conformed to the current litigation uh, psychology and the judicial needs of the of the general public, especially in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. This year, the Beijing Internet Court has been playing a significant role and has gained far-reaching development. And this novel uh, judicial category affects the legal profession to some extent as well. So I think so we, we should to yes, to uh, some some to the different kind of uh, court in in China up to now. You know, one is some kind of uh, traditional court, and I think uh, the internet court, uh, just like some kind of uh, you know, modern a modern court. Uh, and uh, my speech today will focus on two issues. The de development of the Beijing Internet Court and its impact on the legal professions. So, hold on one, one moment. So, and uh, so first, the development of the Beijing Internet Court. And the establishment of the Beijing Internet Court is a, a product of the progress of the time and uh, as well as the judicial and uh, social development. Uh, the establishment of the Beijing Internet Court keeps in line with the trend of the times and it has strong practice needs. This year marks the 28th anniversary of China's access to the international internet and uh, into the internet looking back at the road we have traveling on also it is full of the twists and the turns moving forward is always our determination the development reform and innovation of chinese internet industries have gradually blossomed and been harvested with the rapid development of the internet more and more in the dispute arises. Thus, there is an urgent need for creating a specialized court at the judicial level, which has a professional team and a professional technical means to deal with the inter internet related issues. The establishment of the Beijing Internet Court is also an important achievement of the China's internet judicial development. Since 2013, in order to further meet in the diverse judicial needs of the public, local courts around the country have been actively promoting the internet judicial practice in the area of the judicial transparency, multiple dispute mediations, lit uh, litigation uh, service, trial implementation, etc under the coordinating and the promoting of the Supreme People's Court based on these uh, foundations, the establishment of the Beijing Internet Court could further enrich the judicial practice uh, concerning the internet and improve the judicial system of the internet. Also, establishing the Beijing Internet Court can strengthen the, the capacity of the comprehensively governing cyberspace and the promoting the building of the security system in cyberspace. Moreover, the establishment of the Beijing Internet Court is an inevitable requirement for exporting the legal rules in cyberspace governance. With the rapid growth of the internet industry, the network has been profoundly changing the, product, uh, the production life and behavior style of human beings. It can be said that the internet has already become another social and living space for people, which will inevitable occur various conflicts and chaos 
such as frequent network in fragment, the serious situation of the protecting people's personal information, unclear boundary and the, and the rules of emerging economic forms and business model rules, and, and so forth. All these new situations and the problems are in urgent needs of the judicial response and the governing by rule of law in order to achieve the already and the healthy development of the United economy. And so, the experiment of the Beijing Internet Court fully reflects the innovation and advanced nature of the judicial reform. And uh, so, in terms of the case to, uh, jurisdiction, centralized the jurisdiction is implemented based on the provision of the Supreme People's Court on several issues concerning the trial of case in the Internet Court. The Beijing Internet Court shall have centralized tradition over 11, 11 classifications of first instance in those cases within Beijing that should be accepted by its local people's court, mainly including the several and the administrative internet cases arising from the online shopping, network service, financial loans, infringement of the intellectual property rights, personal rights, property rights, etc. on internet. Unlike these traditional courts, the internet courts mainly have the judicial uh, jurisdictions over online disputes and implementing its unique litigation rules. To, and specifically, online disputes shall be trialed and uh, completed online, namely the two-line litigation model, which fully demonstrating the characteristics of the internet court. In addition, since civil and administrative cases occurs on the internet are both accepted by the internet court, the internet court have comprehensive jurisdictions and uh, modernity is uh, uh, modern is is feasible. Uh, in terms of the manner of the case trial. The old process of case trial is conducted online in order to better realize the goal that online disputes shall be tried online and Beijing collecting evidence for parties and uh, identifying the facts of the cases. The Beijing Internet Court have taken the lead in building the balance of blockchain electronic evidence platform the parties can store evidence where the application uh, mode of the balance blockchain allows. Once a, loose, uh, a lawsuit is filed in the Beijing Internet Court, the evidence can be verified by the way of uh, comparing the hash values and uh, the ver verified result can be directly sent to the judge. Such a blockchain judicial platform readily reduce the cost of the collecting and uh, authenticating the electronic evidence. And uh, in terms of the courtroom construction, the Beijing Internet Court apply virtual image technology, building a uh, the three square meter 5G virtual courtroom cabin. And uh, having a courtroom when you can open your computer comes true. The virtual courtroom cabin Together with the standard Internet courtroom, a bureau purpose courtroom for office and the trials and the office courtroom constitutes an Internet court construction system that is online and the plus office integrated economically and, and environmentally friendly. And uh, and using a other other just exchange uh, as a digital economy instead of uh, instructing the experiment of the industry rule for the data industry, promoting a 
comprehensive regulatory system in the digital aspect and uh, accelerating the improvement of the judicial protection rules for data of rights and also the copyright in fragment cases concerning the lesson to the sound and all the drama and as it repeated by the Beijing court uh, neutral the rules of intellectual property protection uh, stimulating the virtually and the digital economy market balance the uh, relationship between the protecting creative incentives and the interests of the users and the continuously improve the level of the intellectual property protection. So uh, my presentation, the uh, second part, so the impact of development of the inner court on the in of the legal profession. So the first is the, the state Beijing Internet Court and uh, so it uh, the impact of development of the Internet Court on the legal profession uh, significantly improve the efficiency of the judge trial. So the Beijing Internet Court has built a electronic litigation platform by uh, uniting the number of the, uh, the internet technology companies and uh, absorbing the cutting edge technology such as the big data, artificial intelligence, and uh, the blockchain. It strengthens the uh, con connecting between the technology and the justice and enhance their um, extensive ability. The platform has used natural technology in, in deeps, including the, but not limited to speech and the face recognition. It has integrated multiple platforms such as uh, a diversified dispute resolution, trial implementation, electronic evidence, storage, and, uh, and archives and the electronic service into one. Thus, the whole process of launching the litigation, mediation, accepting for failing the service, hearing, judgment, implementation, and the, and the uh, appeal can be qualified and finished online. And the Beijing Internet Court is 24 hours open. Service allows the parties to file their lawsuits online, wherever and uh, wherever possible. A special victory planning can be automatically generated. Evidence submission, mediation, and court hearing are directly conducting online and by room and remote video without leaving home. A document can be uh, strictly served electronically. Enforcement cases are Exerted online and appeal cases files are directly transferred online. Up to now, the online filing rate in the Beijing Internet Court is 100%. The rate of the indication court being paid online, online is 94.5%. The average court hearing length is 20, uh, 36 minutes, and the rate of the judicial document or electronic service is. 90.5%. 90, 90 uh, As to this example of cases in the Beijing Internet Court, only 49 cases are heard through the traditionally office face-to-face uh, -face trials. The rate of the online court hearing is up to 99.9%, which greatly improves the efficiency of judicial work. And also the efficiently serving the lawyers work cost and uh, the establishment of the Internet Court and the development of the artificial intelligence technology have an impact on the legal service industry by resolving the dispute more efficiently as well as the serving the cost of the legal work. The, con the content and the method of lawyers' work have gradually changed.
and also the uh, the providing experience for the establishment of the internet prosecutor's office. And uh, in, uh, in the long run, internet technology is changing the constantly in addition to so artificial intelligence, big data, and uh, metamorphosis. This will be more new things and challenge endlessly emerging. People will live their lives in all aspects within the virtual uh, space. This virtual space needs both direct reg regulations by law and a new type of the judicial model to, to lead it. The establishment of uh, internet court has its uh, in, uh, in inevitability, necessarily, and uh, feasibility is, is a fact that only the China, China has established the United Court in the, in the world, maybe the first one. Also, some other countries have launched online court hearing for their traditional trial, as well as promulgating the laws on e-justice. They have not yet created a unified internet court to exclusively accept the internet cases. As the construction of the China's internet court hints on the moving forward, more and more experience can be gained, which could lie a solid foundation for the progress of the internet litigation system and other countries can, um, and maybe so the China can provide some, some experience to the other country practice. In, in the meantime, uh, human society and is uh, assassinating is migration to the online virtual world, which will build a brand new set of social rules. The mission of the contemporary legal professional is to participate in establishing this set of rules. It is a historic opportunity and a great challenge for all the legal prof professionals. So I think that's all on my presentation. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Yes. So, um, uh, yes, may open up uh, questions. Uh, yes, Richard. Hi. Hi, Shenzhen. Uh, good morning. Uh, hi, Richard. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to ask one question also on the uh, digital justice, because it seems that um, this is also part of the drive to deal with judicial corruption. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, uh, in some ways, yeah. So now, and uh, so uh, I think so that it, uh, one one part of the, the aspect to uh, to uh, to against the judicial corruption, some kind of transparency. I think so. Yes. In some ways, so the internet court does uh, play a leading role to some in the aspect of the the highly degree of the transparency. I think. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, I had a question. I think this is a challenge for every system as we move certain kinds of uh, to the internet for certain kinds of trials and hearings. Is that um, over time, it wants, as long as the technology works, it it can have an enhanced efficiency for the judges, for the court, for um, it actually allows uh, in doing interviews with um, lawyers and judges and clerks that it might allow better public access if that public access is allowed for actual hearings that are online. The piece that we, um, we had a, ran a project for two years trying to identify though places where um, like it, it actually, there's some problems uh, in terms of the quality, like the mm -hmm. difficulty of assessing quality of in dispute resolution is huge. It's huge when you do it in person. It's huge when you do it online. You have to have metrics of what constitutes quality. But we did, we started interviewing people just to say, well, where are places where the, there's a little concern, just a concern we should study more about the quality of, um, of, of the justice or outcomes that um, take place online. And there was, I, maybe I misunderstood, but did you say it, like the average case, once all the materials are there for the judges to assess, takes like 34 minutes to assess or 
So yeah, 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 yeah. So the, the, no, I, I think so. It's in some the average, just general. So maybe every case to trial in the Beijing Internet Corp. So every uh, around uh, thirty six minutes to uh, to to trial. The reason why you know so and so uh, in the in the Beijing Internet Corp, the, the the category of their the cases of the trial maybe so the case must be happened in the internet for example the shopping. And so you know, so uh, uh, in you know, so the traditional in some shopping mall, maybe the face to face, yes. Yeah. Uh, and in, in that cost, so uh, not in face to face. So I, I mean, so uh, the customer and so some kind of uh, the shopper, they, they have some kind of a very gener generalized some kind of contract. Right. So very easily to uh, easily to find. Who who in the the the, the round where who is the right one? So maybe so those might be the five minute cases. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so maybe the the, the the category category of cases. Yes, in, in a, um, spend a very limited amount of time. So yeah. So I, I mean, so the some kind of uh, uh, the the cases trialed in the uh, Beijing the court very simple. Not some, for example, some kind of criminal case. Criminal case must be traditional way. Yes. So. That, for example, also in the United States, the play play bargaining is yes, saving the time, but the jury trials are, are relatively so the long time. For example, the uh, the, the OJ Simpson around the ten months of the long trial. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's a different kind of category. Yeah. Right. So it, what's interesting is like you. This could be a. a so many of the cases function almost like small claims and they can oh, yeah, probably yeah. go very quickly. And yeah. I predict the range of cases in here could be quite massive. This I think suggests just a comment rather than a question that for all yeah. of our systems, we have not even begun to do a really rigorous study with sociologists mm -hmm. who would go in there and after the you know kinks get worked out and really start to study and both um, the experience of the litigants, the experience of, of the individuals who are involved, of the judges, the law clerks, so we can, um, and then whether mm -hmm. you could do a comp, like a control study and look at, at in-person court and mm -hmm. really begin to say, how can we find, I think this, we all agree it's here to stay, but how do we fine tune it? Because I think there is right now, what, efficiency is so obvious, is yeah. there, and it's important to talk about. Efficiency is mm -hmm. very important, but that finding those, like, pressure points where there might be questions about quality. It's all of it. Like in the US, it's really hard to even identify those, much less mm. construct a thoughtful study. But that's a bigger issue than us. I think we need to turn it over to Yinbo and learn about the life as a criminal defense lawyer. Thank We're you. so grateful for you sharing your expertise here. OK. Judy, you have to. Can you can you see my slides? Not yet. I think um, uh, Shu Shenzhen, if you could yeah, stop yeah, share and now that. you do share. Okay. Yes. Criminal defense. Great. Okay. Can you can you see my slides? Yes. Now we can. Great. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Professor Xu and Ding, uh, and ask me to come here. And I will uh, share uh, some experience of mine in terms of the special problems of criminal defense lawyering during the online criminal proceedings in China. And I'm in both from Beijing Normal University as well as from uh, King and Capital Law Firm. And I'm a criminal defense lawyer in the same time. You know, it's very, very interesting. Oh. And as Chinese criminal procedure tends to be inquisitorial rather than the adversarial, and so I, I, I should say the pre-trial stage is even more important than the trial stage in terms of identifying the facts of the case. Therefore, I should divide a, the online criminal proceedings into pre-trial stage and the trial stage. So the, first of all, uh, uh, you can look at the picture, you can find the pre-trial the stage that you had the, the, the face to face, the interview. Uh, with your client and as a lawyer. So uh, so first of all, we'll, I'm, I'm going to talk about the online application of the Leland system of confession and punishment. So the negotiated justice has been promoted in China for more than four years. 
and its proportion has been over 80%. So therefore, it has been a uh, mainstream of disposition of the, the criminal cases after four to five years legal reform. So it can be called the Chinese uh, plea bargaining. So that is, as this Chinese plea bargaining is normally put forward by the prosecution in the pre-trial stage. So I will, I will discuss it especially this lead in the system of a confession admission and the punishment the acceptance means the trade between the exception of the guilty and punishment and the certain percentage of sentencing reduction. So it's not entirely the same to the plea bargaining in the United States. Though this system is regarded as an advanced approach of national governance system and capacity because it reduced the conflict between the criminal suspects and the state. So the, for the case of accepting guilty and punishment, the most of the phases of, have been completed by the prosecution. So therefore the standard for the identifying the fact, asserting, asserting the evidence and safeguarding the rights for the criminal suspect is even higher than the other cases in the prosecution uh, stage. This requires prosecutors face-to-face -face meet with the criminal suspect and his defense lawyer. The Article 36 of the Criminal Procedure Law grants the criminal suspect the right to duty lawyer. The duty lawyer, as you might know, the, the duty solicitor uh, in the in United Kingdom or the defense counsel. And the Article 174 of the Criminal Procedure Law requires the presence of the defense counsel or the duty lawyer when the criminal suspect signed a written, a fitted, uh, a written agreement of the confession and the punishment acceptance with the procurator. So there should be a written agreement between the, the prosecutor and the criminal suspect. So actually, outbreak of COVID-19 has brought the negotiator just as a new challenge. As you may know, China applied the strictest isolation rules against the COVID-19 for the ensuring ad adequate distance between the different persons. So amongst all the criminal justice agencies, the detention office and the prison are the most sensible agencies because there are too many people crowded together in the confined space. So if, uh, if this one case or other people uh, may be affected immediately, so the detention, detention office creates many troubles, uh, not only for the, the uh, defense lawyers, but also for the police, prosecutors, and the judges who wish to interrogate the criminal suspects or the accused. Uh, in general sense, the Beijing, the defense lawyers are more ex uh, expertise and brave than the local lawyers. However, due to the epidemic prevention policy, the defense lawyer may need to be isolated for seven to 14 days in the targeted city if you want to see your client outside Beijing. So sometimes you are even not allowed to see your client. Alternatively, you can have a chance to go to the detention office to use the video, the digital device. Uh, if you provide the uh, 48 hours nucleic uh, acid test negative report. So you can anticipate many difficulties, even you are allowed either to use the digital screen to see your client. So how to promote this new system during the period as to the promote the control of the virus and the resumption of the work has been the urgent issue for the criminal justice agencies. So under the guidance of the uh, two documents, uh, one is about the opinions of and uh, of the application of the leader in the system of conf confession and punishment and the opinions of the punishing crimes that hinder the prevention and control of a COVID-19 infection, according to the law issued by the Supreme People's Court and the Procurator and the Ministry of the Public Security, Ministry of National Security, and Ministry of the Justice. So there are two models of dealing with cases, including remote, remote video, uh, plus the electronic signature and remote video and afterward the signature. So there are actually the two models. Uh, so first of all, uh, I, I let me show you. Uh, I, actually, this kind of 80% of the cases are dealt with by this the Chinese plea bargaining system. 
I mean, first of all, let, let's look at this kind of model. This model adopts online methods, including the use of the cloud video system for remote interrogation, remote signature of a, a confession agreement through the mobile phone screen. The taking um, Changzhou city as an example, a criminal suspect was on bail for awaiting his trial in other places at the time and could not return due to the closure of the road. The local prosecutor first informed the criminal suspect through the cloud video that the software, he had the right to admit guilty and accept the punishment and then interrogate him remotely. At the same time, the duty lawyer called Lee witnessed his acceptance of guilty and the sentencing recommendation. Eventually, this criminal suspect signed a name on the mobile phone screen um, of the cloud vision. At the same time, at, at the same time, the cloud video vision uh, simi uh, simultaneously recorded a restored interrogation progress. However, this model is entirely dominated by the procuratorate and it requires a high effect of the facilities. It is necessary to debug the equipment to ensure the smoothness of the net, net, network connection and the fully com communicate with the duty lawyer or defense counsel online. So this remote video uh, arrangement method has resolved the problem of inability to be in close contact with the in epidemic. The technology of online electronic signatures have provided a guarantee for the duty admission and the punishment acceptance. However, this method requires a high level informatization, uh, i.e. more prepared electronic equipment to ensure the smoothness of the whole process online. And the second is the, uh, the remote video and after words and signatures normally uh, used. And uh, it, it's actually this practice not dependent on the online work. In the context of severe epidemic, tech, uh, technical equipment is only a convenient uh, commu communication platform for the criminal justice. A typical representative of this model is the first branch of the People's Procuratorate of Hainan province. For the detained criminal suspect, they may sign an agreement by means of remote interrogation video system. At the place where the criminal suspect is detained, procuratorial personnel re, uh, resident in the detention office and technical uh, personnel assist the criminal suspect to open video equipment. And then the, the people assist of the case inform the criminal suspect of their rights and obligations to admit a guilt and accept punishment through the remote interrogation system that com communicate the sentencing recommendation with the online witness of the lawyer. So if agreement had been reached, the person, the sense of the case, will read the agreement to the criminal sus suspect and let the lawyer sign the agreement and send to the procuratorial personnel resident in the detention office and then forward to the criminal suspect. The criminal suspect will sign a stamp knowledge and forward to the person sense of the case. For the criminal suspects who are not in custody, they may communicate with the criminal suspects and lawyers on sentencing recommendations through the commonly used instance messaging uh, software such as WeChat and the QQ. If agreement has been reached, and the, this agreement is mailed to criminal suspects and the lawyer, lawyer success, success, successively, and the signature seal shall be completed before taking effect. So you can have a look at this kind of model. This is a remote, this is a, a remote video and afterward the signature. And uh, uh, then the, about the trial stage, in the circumstance of the online trial, the criminal proceeding tends to be formalities rather than substantive trial with real examination and the cross examination. So the procedural rights cannot be entirely ensured for the defense counsel, at least from the appearance. So from my experience, online trials normally suggested by the courts and decided by the accused. If the accused insists on a face-to-face -face trial, it will normally last for at least a half a year because the detention office may not let the, the accused taken out of the court 
for the uh, virus issue. The open court may be a little bit easier to get access, but the most strictly controlled site is the detention office. So in this scenario, the court wish the accused to accept the guilty and punishment as well as the online trial. However, the online trial may be may result in some new problems. So last month, actually last month, I appeared online before the trial organized by the people uh, Beijing first intermediary people's court for a case of misappropriation of 150 million public funds and the offering bribery of uh, 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 to a uh, non-state uh, personnel. We, the lawyers, set be, uh, before a big video in a law firm connected with the, the trial court, the prosecution and detention office. We could not clearly uh, see what have happened at the court. And the prosecution and my client even did not appear in the screen, whilst we could only vaguely hear their voice. At the beginning, it took uh, about uh, 45 minutes for the court to connect with the detention office and the prosecution. And uh, moving to the uh, legal ethics problems of the uh, criminal defense lawyering are in the online criminal proceedings in China. I, I should, uh, uh, you know, the, put forward the three, the conflicts. The first is about the instance, insistence of the immediacy and virus, the acceptance of the expediency. Uh, application of the info, information technology may impair the principle of immediacy in criminal justice. The principle of immediacy means all the persons in criminal justice shall personally experience the whole process, directly review all kinds of the evidence and listen to the claims, reasons and debates of the other participants and make decisions on the case. Internet plus and the modern justice may result in the risks against the procedural rights for the accused and destroy ritualty and solemnity of the traditional criminal justice. And the traditional criminal justice uh, theory holds that the person being persecuted and the child has experienced a series of the solemn ritual ac activities that will be deterred and educated. It requires a solemn trial court where both parties attend and battle against each other. The defense lawyer will try his utmost to help the client in such a scenario to let him feel the fair trial. However, the online criminal proceeding de deconstructs the ritualty, solemnity of the criminal justice. Whether the criminal defense lawyer shall insist on the principle of immediacy and accept the expediency in the online justice era is a tension for the legal ethics. So nevertheless, uh, it is widely argued that the online model does not violate the principle of immediacy because the online process does not mean the absence of the criminal defense. The principle of experience is mainly reflected in two aspects for the defense lawyer, the, the direction, uh, the direct participa participation and oral representation. Therefore, the online trial still accords with the principle of immediacy. In other words, the substantive uh, representation makes more sense uh, than the presence before the client. It's necessary to improve the communication technology. The two, the technological, uh, technical obstacle may create some risk uh, as the defense counsel cannot observe the appearance of the uh, uh, participants in the criminal proceedings and form an intuitive and accurate understanding of the case. The second conflict is duty to the client virus the duty to the criminal justice agency. I, I think that from the United States perspective, we might think the duty to the court uh, or do, duty to the judge, but in our country, it is actually the duty to the criminal justice agency. So on the, on, on the one hand, the defense lawyers should ensure the vol uh, voluntariness of the accused and the integrity of the criminal process. From the procedural integrity perspective, it means that the defense lawyer had better insist on face-to-face -face trial and stand beside the accused. However, if it is too rigid, too much time might, might be wasted for the accused, especially when he was detained in the detention office. From the sentencing perspective, the defense lawyer need to calculate whether it is worth insisting on uh, offline uh, trial. On the other hand, the defense lawyer might need to follow the duty to the criminal justice agencies 
consider the feasibility of the online trial. Realistically, the defense counsel may need to, to focus on the case file rather than looking at the trial as a criminal just, uh, Chinese criminal uh, just tends to be inquisitorial rather than adversarial. Nevertheless, uh, ensuring the voluntary list for the client uh, accepting his duty and the punishment does not only serve his interest, but also of course with the public interest and in fulfill the obligation to the to the court. Now, under the uh, epidemic situation, lawyer cannot communicate face to face with the person being prosecuted and fully understand the facts of the case. Present to the witness the signature of the agreement now became online approach. In practice, some uh, cases even adopt a two point working. Uh, that is. You know, that is the, the prosecutor and the lawyer are one at the one end of the video and the criminal suspect is at the other end of the video. So which often results in a one too many oppressed position for the suspects who lack legal knowledge. This is not conducive to ensuring the voluntariness of the admitting duty and accepting punishment. The third uh, conflict is a duty of confidentiality as to the case file, whereas the duty of, of obeying the direction of the court. In terms of the case of the, uh, the guilty admission and the punishment acceptance, the procurator may need to disclose the eminence to the criminal suspect, ensuring the criminal suspect's right to know authenticity and the voluntariness of his admitting guilty and accepting punishment. However, for the online criminal proceedings, it is impossible for the evidence disclosure. So first, the dis disclosure of the evidence through the screen will inevitably uh, affect the criminal suspect or the accused judgment of the authenticity, relevance, and leg uh, legality of the evidence. The second, due to the limit of the digital device, it is not clear for the criminal suspect to identify the Evidence. So from my experience, the judge even persuaded me into disclose evidence uh, in the defense case file to the accused, not in a detention. As you may know, it is illegal or not allowed for the defense lawyer to reveal the case file in China. Nobody dares to give the case file to the accused. So therefore, I need to balance the duty of confidentiality as to the case file and the duty of obeying the direction of the court. So the, the, my conclusion now, uh, maybe not so clear, the online approach does partly resolve the problem of the criminal justice during the epidemic uh, period in China, but also creates new problems in terms of legal ethics. So how to ease the tension for the defense lawyer need to structure the choice uh, itinerary. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Oh, thank you very, very much. That's great. And so, um, questions? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm really uh, impressed by the paper. And, and one point I want to raise is the you talk about the tension between the acceptance of the credency and the, uh, the term. But to what extent is the trial lawyers feel pressure to choose online trial in practice? So that means, do they feel the pressure that they will penalize if they choose online trial instead of insisting on uh, real court trial? Thank you. Uh, uh, from my own experience, it creates too much pressure for me because uh, normally the uh, the client and client's family insist on the uh, you know the direct uh, examination and a uh, cross examination. That's an open trial. Because normally the client ask me, uh, invite me, or hire me, and they give me too much money. And uh, if they, it is an offline trial, it, it will create much pressure for me because I, that uh, I I even cannot uh, had, have a, such a capacity to create an uh, offline trial. But uh, unfortunately, the uh, I think the, the court is, is in despair because uh, the court uh, cannot lead the trial uh, because the detention office dominates the position uh, in the criminal trial rather than the court. The detention office is normally the most sensitive is, uh, is uh, they have they provide a, a very strict policies that um, can, 
that cannot let the court to do to get the uh, get the criminal suspect out of the, the detention office and to the court. So uh, normally, you know, the, the, the pressure is too much, not only for, for us, but also for the for the for the court. And and uh, uh, if it is an uh, online trial and a uh, in different area, you will find a different uh, uh, level of uh, inform information, in, in, information, the digital device. Uh, even in Beijing, you, you can anticipate that, you, that the, in Beijing, uh, uh, the first intermediary, the court is very advanced, but unfortunately, their device is still very poor and it creates a, a lot of problems for us to, to see clearly of our client for uh, you know to meet our with our client, so actually the effect is uh, is is awful. I should say awful, uh, and uh, some is sometimes sometimes the, the trial tends to be uh, formalities, you know. So actually, it can it, it not only you know it can provide the impartiality, the judicial impartiality, but also. Uh, it creates an, an, a, a way, something like uh, only for, for only formalities, and uh, only you know they have already had their decisions before the trial, so <laughs> create an, an uh, injustice appearance from uh, from from uh, you know from appearance. So actually, uh, for us, uh, we are trying our best to create an, an offline trial, but unfortunately. Uh, nowadays, 85% of the cases cannot be issued an offline. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. Uh, um, I think that perhaps uh, uh, we can, I will get folks uh, email addresses and we'll um, uh, be able, I'll exchange uh, for folks who want to follow up directly. This has been fabulous. Fabulous. Thank you so much for all the work that you did preparing for this. I know that you were bringing yourself up to speed and gathering your thoughts and creating the concepts. And I think we absolutely can learn from each other. I think we're facing um, similar challenges in online proceedings in the US. Of course, we our criminal process is different. So we have that plays out differently, but um, definitely on the civil side. So I think this is the, as we say, a beginning of a beautiful conversation. So thank you so much. Well, we really appreciate all of you. So I'm, and all of your insights, you're, uh, we are in the enlightenment room, so thank for your enlightenment. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I will now conclude the recording and we're deeply grateful. Okay. I will uh, sign off. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank wonderful, you. wonderful, wonderful, thank you. Thank you, Judy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.